Okay, uh, my name is uh, James Thomas Green, Just, and uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm offended that nobody tried a piece <laughs> of the pizza that I brought for the potluck. Um, this semester, this is my fourth semester here in uh, ceramics, and uh, this semester, I would say, could be characterized by experimentation and mass production. And I'll go, the reason for that, I started working on tiles. I was working, experimenting on different techniques to make tiles and make them flat. This was one of the first ones I did this semester, just a simple one with my name. And it's thin and it's kind of bowed. So um, I worked out some other techniques. Um, these are a little flatter, but they're smaller. Um, the clay seems to warp uh, unless you work with it right. That seems to be a function of how much moisture it has in it, how quickly it's drying, how much moisture it has when it goes in the kiln. So letting things dry is something I need to work more on. This pizza here was supposed to be flat, but it's kind of warped. And uh, next semester I've got some ideas about uh, how I'm going to make another one of these, but make it flatter. And uh, this has it, all the traditional pizza ingredients, mushrooms, peppers, olives, onions, and a dolphin. And this tile here, I have, uh, this is still in greenware. It's gonna get fired next semester. So far, it's laying pretty flat, and I did a few things, which I can explain to you later, what I've done to keep it flat at this stage. I made this little lily. Now, this is a pretty simple thing to do, and I think I could probably pop out 10 of these in an afternoon now that I've got the technique down. They're nice, they're small, they're kind of semi-realistic, and uh, they're nice. Uh, another one of my mass production techniques, things, was the coffee cup lid. Now, I didn't make the cup, I made the lid. And you've got a flat lid here, and a, something on top can be anything. And this, you put this to keep the dust all out, keep the coffee warm, keep the roaches out, whatever. And uh, I've got several of them here. I've got a flower. Some of you have seen me wearing my hat, and a few others. Um, whistles. I worked on whistles this semester. And I learned a lot about making whistles blow. And that, uh, uh, there's a handout up there on the wall, and I looked at that, and I did a little more research online, and just worked and worked and worked, and I got a whole bunch of whistles, which this is my four-chambered whistle. So, um, now this was another one of the techniques I used is I took a balloon, just like this. I filled it with water and I wrapped clay around it. And I got this nice long tube which I uh, then, in this case, cut into four segments and made whistles different lengths. Um, when I make my next one, I'm going to actually look into the physics of acoustics so that I can get a scale on here. This last one, you may have noticed, has a higher pitch than the others, counterintuitively, but I think that throws it into the next octave, if you know what that means in science terms. Um, I made another one here. This is what I call the foghorn. This is the same thing, water balloon, tube, uh, except instead of cutting it out, up, I left it in one piece. This is still greenware, it's why it's on the board, so I don't break it when I pick it up. So that'll be fired next semester, which I will come back for semester five. And finally, I have what I call the swimmers. These are my first human forms. 
Um, you, they're kind of jumping up out of the water, which is what they're supposed to be. And I used a, a cobalt uh, carbonate stain on these to give them that blue color. Some of you others, I don't know if anyone in this class used that or not. Oh, you did, okay. So, was it that video we watched the other day where the woman was talking about that piece that came out, but her initial reaction when she saw it was it wasn't she, what she expected and she didn't like it. And that was kind of my first impression. So I'm still trying to figure out whether I like it or not. Um, but these are my first human forms uh, beyond the head. And uh, the last piece I want to show is kind of this is the accumulation of the entire semester. All the techniques to try to keep warping down because these wobble the, at the bottom, the base wobbles. And uh, so, anyway, this, for if you don't, can't tell, is an otter holding a head of lettuce. This is a symbol, symbolizes Monterey County, the bay and the valley. And this is based on something I did up in Jerry Numero's computer class. Um, about a year ago, I made an image for one of our classes of an otter holding head of lettuce as a logo for a class project. And I've been meaning to do it down here, and finally I've got enough knowledge to do it. This is still in the greenware stage. Mm, I'll probably be showing the, the final version of it next semester. And uh, oh, there's one last thing. The mass production of these, in order to start producing these, I made this form. The idea is that uh, mash the clay down in here and you get this kind of ridge, which some of you may see, so that if you tilt your coffee, coffee cup, it doesn't just slide off onto the ground and crash. I mean, it won't go for a steep turn, but it will prevent just a casual walking down the hallway falling off. And I made this, so the idea is you pack the clay on here, let it dry, pop it off, put whatever it is you're going to put on top, and then go to the next one. And that's it.